Welcome back to Jade's Corner, the channel where I provide high quality and thought provoking Teen Wolf content. In today's video, I'll be providing the Teen Wolf Season 5B power scale, which is going to be the follow up to my Teen Wolf Season 5A power scaling video that I did last week. Quick disclaimer before this video begins, I know that I messed up in the last video by including Noah Patrick, who does not appear in season five, part one, he appears in season five, part two. So for the sake of this video and that video, I will not be re-exploring Noah Patrick because it'd be kind of redundant and pointless. So we're just gonna you know, continue on with the list as we have it for today. So at number 14, we're gonna start with Corey Bryant. Not much to say, he doesn't really change from part one. This is where he goes respectively at the bottom of the list. At number 13, Joshua Diaz. He has a couple of more feats in 5B, but nothing to make him stand out from the other chimeras and other supernatural creatures. Uh, he kind of stays relatively low where he was in the 5A ranking. So Josh is definitely the second weakest creature overall in season 5B, in my opinion. At number 12 is Hayden Romero. Now Hayden gets a boost here because she becomes a werewolf in the finale, but we don't see her do anything this season as a werewolf until season six. So we're just gonna be talking about Hayden as a chimera for the most part, because that's what we see her as for most of the season. And as a chimera, Hayden doesn't do much either. So her spot's not really gonna change much. It's gonna stay the same as it did in the last video. So this is where Hayden goes. And lastly, but not least for the Chimera pack is gonna be Tracy Stewart, who still remains the most powerful of the Chimeras aside from Theo Raken, who is going to be discussed in a little bit. Tracy doesn't really do anything any, to, any different from 5A. She kind of relatively stays the same as well. Um, so there's really no reason to bump her up or bump her down. She kind of relatively the same. So Tracy's gonna stay here at number 11 for this particular ranking. At number 10 is gonna be Malia Tate. Now Malia went down in the rankings because of a particular character that got a significant power boost later on in season 5B, who we're gonna get to in a little bit. So Malia, you know, she, she has some pretty good feats in 5B. She fights her mom. She ends up uh, participating in the fights with the beast, but not really doing anything, kind of just roaring at it. Uh, as with a lot of the team will fights, there's really nothing going on. It seems to be people just roaring at each other and then they like cut off and then we cut back. We see somebody who got their ass whooped. So yeah, Malia, I think she belongs at number 10 in 5B at least. At number nine is going to be Liam Dunbar. Uh, he kind of gets humbled a little bit in 5B, you know, after that whole Supermoon incident. He's not as powerful as he would have been during that episode. But Liam is still strong nonetheless and is still one of the strongest Supernaturals in this season. And the reason why he goes up at number nine for me is because he, you know, tried to take on the Beast, got bodied instantly. But the fact that he tried to take him on and even survived getting attacked by the Beast without dying in like one shot is still kind of crazy to me. So, yeah, Liam deserves his just due. Definitely number nine for me. And number eight is going to be Theo Raken with all the powers of his Chimera pack minus Corey and Hayden. Uh, so with Josh and Tracy's powers. Now, Theo was a problem once he got um, Josh and Tracy's powers because not only did he have his were coyote and werewolf abilities, he had the Canama abilities that Tracy had and the electric eel abilities that Josh had. So he essentially was like a chimera with the powers of like four different supernatural species at that point, which is kind of crazy. But the reason why Theo is here and not above is because everybody above him is just so much more significantly powerful that it wouldn't kind of make sense to put him above these next few characters so yeah i think this is where theo goes realistically now if we're talking about season six theo theo would have to go down a bit because we literally saw on screen that theo could barely take a punch from liam if liam got serious enough to get in a fight with theo theo would have clearly gotten destroyed by liam so yeah that kind of backs up what I say about, you know, the whole Chimera thing. Chimeras aren't as strong as Supernatural. It's like, it took a couple of hits for Liam's nose to start bleeding, I think, when Theo was hitting him. But it took like one hit from Liam to make Theo bleed. And Theo was complaining that the punch hurt a lot. So, yeah. Um, Theo, number eight. Number seven is going to be Noshiko Yukimura. 
she doesn't really change much in any season. It's kind of just like if she's in the season, she's automatically in the top 10 or top five. She has to be. She's like the oldest supernatural creature in the series, aside from the Nogatsune. Centuries upon centuries of experience of, uh, you know, fighting skill and whatnot. The only reason other supernatural creatures would be above her, honestly, is because we see them do more because Noshiko doesn't really do much. So, yeah. Noshiko, number seven. And number six is going to be Kira. Kira remains ab above her mom in terms of power in season 5B, just like she did in 5A, because she still does not have control over the whole augmentation thing that the Dread Doctors did to her in 5A. She does work on it a little bit and does seem to have better control towards the end of the season, but for a majority of the season, her power is still kind of out of control and she can't really control it that much. So yeah, Kira is number six. And number five is gonna be Scott McCall. Scott does a lot in 5B, he fights the beast a couple of times and he does pretty decent. And the re the main reason why Scott is this high is because the beast actually compliments him in uh, season 5B. I think a lot of people overlook that because a lot of people's main argument for Scott being weak is, oh, Scott can't win a fight. Oh, he lost against Liam. But a lot of people forget the context when it comes to Team Wolf for some odd reason. So yeah, go back and rewatch that scene in Apotheosis where... Um, Sebastian transforms back into a human and he actually compliments Scott calling him pretty strong uh, for, you know, a werewolf of his stature. So, yeah, the fact that Scott got props from the Beast of Jevadan himself is is pretty impressive and should put Scott McCall on a pedestal way above other alphas in the series, especially if the Beast is complimenting him. And the Beast is like the golden standard for werewolves in the entirety of Teen Wolf. It's the strongest werewolf post Teen Wolf the movie and pre Teen Wolf the movie. So, yeah. Number four is going to be Deucalion. Just by default, Deucalion has to be the most powerful non Beast of Javadan werewolf. I know Jeff Davis has said that um, in his personal ranking for who he would rank for the top four strongest werewolves, he put Peter at the bottom. He put Scott above him, I think, Deucalion, and then the Beast at number one. So it's kind of like in line with how I sort of view these werewolves in a sense. But yeah, I just think that it's 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 freaking Deucalion. Like Deucalion has to be in the top five and he has to be above Scott by default. So yeah, number three, Dread Doctors. Nothing much really changes with them. They stay pretty much the same as they do in season 5A. They just do more of the same, I guess. So yeah, number three is where they're gonna go. And number two is gonna be the Hellhound, AKA Jordan Parrish. Um, Parrish, again, we see more from him, a lot more in 5B, doesn't really do anything, stays relatively the same as he did in 5A, just we see more beats from him instead of him just being on and off, having random transformations, which he still does in 5B, which he still has in 5B, but, you know, it's, it's, it's Parrish, like, <laughs> we know how strong he is. And number one, we're not even going to talk about it that much because... I've already talked about this creature a crap ton of times on the channel throughout the channel's history of uh, six years. Uh, the Beast of Zevedan, it's not even close. Jeff Davis already confirmed in a bunch of interviews post series ending, pre series ending while it's still on TV, that the Beast is the most powerful creature in the entirety of Teen Wolf, and it's not even close. So, yeah, that's the list for season 5b and that completes the season 5 power scale as a whole so now that we've reached the end of the video i'll leave this question for you who is your favorite supernatural character from season 5b all my social media are linked in the description below if you want to follow or contact me there is a google form below where you can suggest any ideas for future content if that is something you're interested in as well don't forget to check out my book series true alpha the first book is now available digitally on amazon through kindle Chapter 11 is out now on Patreon and Chapter 12 will be released this Friday. The official True Alpha Wiki is also linked below for questions about the, the True Alpha Wiki is also linked below for questions about the verse. Anything you need to know about the series is on that OneNote Wiki.